Uh, that said, we've seen Bryant win this matchup before. It's certainly not good for him, but not unwinnable. And away we go here in round number six of competition. It's a scalding tarn here from the Boz. Always good to see the Boz in the future match area. You know, I know he's number 11 on the season two leaderboard, but you know, he's having a heck of a year, man. Yes, he has. He's been doing really, really well for himself. You know, when you think of Boswell, you think of Obzon Agro, you think of Green White Agro in the previous standard format. You don't think about a lot of legacy accomplishments here for him, but the man can just straight play magic. Absolutely. And, you know, he, he told me it, it's taking him a little while to get comfortable with this deck. He has his two buys. And he said the early turns of this game are very challenging to play. He doesn't have a lot of reps in, but uh, he's getting his experience as he goes, and he's 5 0 right now. He's got Delver Secrets to start. Very important in this matchup that you get a clock going. Especially Delver, flip it early and then have that wall of protection. Yeah, even 12 counter spells is not enough to keep Storm off of doing its thing eventually. And Storm also gets to a point where it has a lot of mana to play around Daze and Spell Pierce and can simply Cabal Therapy away the, your Force of Wills as well. So very important for Andrew to get off to a start. With pressure, force Brian to play into the soft counter spells and hopefully kill him before Brian can get his hand set up. Boswell playing what I like to call the Jacob Wilson main deck here with Teamer Delver. Wilson, when he did go on his 8-0 run at the Season 1 Invitational, all fours and then two copies of Dismember. Oh, Andrew told me during the break that he just copied Jacob's list. Well, that's smart. <laughs> that's, a, that's a smart place to be. Here's a ponder from Cook. I'm a very, very loud advocate for Gitaxian Probe and all these styles of decks, but I'm pumping the brakes on talking about that this weekend because if anyone knows, it's Jacob Wilson. Boswell going to take a look. It's a spell, Pierce. Great reveal. Very, very good card in this matchup. See, the interesting thing about this matchup is I do think it's favorable for Team Redelver, though I think Storm can win. And if you're someone who's playing Storm, like a Bryant Cook who's been playing Storm for so long, you know, if you compare against a Delver deck, you don't just run away. I mean, you know, he's had to beat these decks over the course of the time he's been playing Storm, which has been forever. Exactly. If you are playing legacy events on the regular, it's not like you don't have a plan for Delver decks. Yeah. I'm sure Bryant does not want to play this matchup. There's a bunch of other better matchups for him in the room. But... I don't think that Brian feels he's just done for by any means. Ponder, the boss is going to keep. He's going to serve in for three here with Insectile Aberration. Perhaps play a Flooded Strand as land number two. Here that is. Now, with that said, boss will start here, turn one, Delver Secrets, turn two, flip it, reveal Spell Pierce, turn three, cast a Ponder. This is not the start that Brian wants to see. It's a little scary. This is one of the good Teamer Delver draws in the matchup. And Boswell's hand is great, too. He's got two spell pierces, a forceful and a stifle in hand, along with the Tarma Wave. So this is a really, really good hand for the boss. We'll see if Cook can overcome it. If there's a Storm player that can, he is certainly one of them. <laughs> little shuffle and present action here before Boswell is ready to move forward. Might just be sacrificing to get this out of the way. Now, I assume that Boswell is familiar with Bryant. You know, because he might be sacrificing the fetch line right now just to say I don't want to get stifled, which is perfectly reasonable. But if he's familiar with Bryant, he knows that he's playing Storm. So here's a good tax game for him. I do not think Bryant is going to like what he sees on the other side of the table in just a moment. Now, there is potential for Boswell to want to spell Pierce here. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he's... Potentially worried about Cabal Therapy so helping this out here. Boswell also won't feel like, well, I've got a mana to spare this turn, and I've got a lot of disruption in my hand, so maybe I'm better served just using my one mana on something reasonable this turn. Uh, that said, Boswell thinks the better of it and just decides to let this let this go, put his hand on the table. So Cook, he gets the contents. He sees the two spell pierces, the Force of Will, the Stifle, and the Tarmogoy. He's going to draw a card from the Gitaxian Probe. Storm count is one. Don't know if we're going to need that just yet. I mean, if Brian goes off this turn through that hand... Good on him. <laughs> Just give him the, give the trophy then. Yep. Kick everyone out of the tournament hall. We're done. It's going to be pretty tough to do. He does have land number two there in Underground C. You see a Chrome Box on hand, Dark Ritual, Cabal Therapy 2. First thing he's got to do is got to poke a hole in that hand. And it's a really good hand. It's hard to poke a hole in. So he's just going to pass the turn after playing a land. Boswell going to draw a card. Picked up a Wasteland. That's pretty good too. Yep. I mean, Boswell's hand here is so good that lands are good, his spells are good. He might even Wasteland this turn. He may simply play the Wasteland, cast Tarmogoyf, and leave up Stifle, Spell Pierce, and Force of Will. Really speed up that clock. Push Brian to have to try to go off into that soft counter spell. I'm gonna start by attacking for three. There is a Wasteland. Gonna activate that Wasteland. 
go after an underground seed. Cook is going to float a little bit of mana here. He'll play a brainstorm, see if this resolves. Looks like Boswell's going to go with a Spell Pierce. I really like Spell Piercing this Brainstorm here because Boswell, we'd like to potentially deploy the Tomogoyf next turn and really speed up his clock here. And Brainstorm's good enough to counter. Uh, ideally, Boswell would be trading his mana resources for Bryant's, getting the pressure into play, leaving himself a Force of Will left over in his hands. Blue to Delta is the land there for Cook. Cook trying to pick a spot. It's hard to poke a hole in this hand, though. Boswell still has a Stifle, a Spell Pierce, and a Force of Will. In some respects, the, the, the Cabal Therapy is right now double tax because it's very hard for Brian to go off against Force of Will. It's also very hard for him to go off against Stifle. Volcanic Eye on the draw, not an action spell there from Boswell. But that isn't even, even that draw is not that bad for Boswell because it allows him to cast Tarmogoyf and leave up a blue mana. Oh, there's an attack for three. That enviable position of lands are good and spells are good. It's a great spot to be in. Really, the only bad draw on the deck is kind of like a Lightning Bolt, maybe a Nibble Mongoose, but even those aren't the worst. Exactly. Even even Lightning Bolt would definitely play. And Nibble Mongoose, he would be able to just cast and leave up a mana. Here comes Tarmogoyf. Pass that turn back. Three cards in Boswell's hand. Cook knows them. He'll take a draw. Tarmogoyf is a 3-4, so if you think about it, Brian's got a about a turn left. Does he have to go off this turn? Well, he's gone down to six, so yes. Yes, he has to. He's going off this turn. Yeah. He has to. See that hand one more time. <laughs> it's asking a lot of Brian to go off through that. I will be impressed if he can do it. The tough part here is that, and we talked about it, Boswell has not played Team Delver a ton. So what's the right spell to counter? Am I supposed to leave with Stifle? Am I supposed to use Spell Pierce? What's the right spell to Force Will? He's going to be put to the test here because it's not always clear what you're supposed to do. Yep. Cook is going to start by sacrificing Polluted Delta. Do you want to Stifle this? Brian's certainly giving him the option with the way that he's tapped his Delta here, not assuming it's going to resolve. I, I think that I like just letting this go because this Polluted Delta is worth one mana. Spell Pierce, assuming you target anything reasonable, is worth two mana. So what I like to do here is intend on using the Spell Pierce on a spell and using Stifle with your Force Will. Unless Bryant randomly casts a Storm card, then you Stifle the Storm Trigger, leave yourself with Force of Will plus Spell Pierce. See, this play is so simple. I'm just sacrificing a Blue to Delta. What's the big deal? But this is huge. You know, if Boswell gets this wrong, this could be a huge issue. But you don't know, because we can't read Cook's mind, how much he needs this Delta. Exactly. And you don't know, maybe he needs this Delta to kickstart some rituals that are in his hand. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, what, what if he's sitting on Rite of Flame right now? Well, then you're way better served stifling the special lane because he can't get a Volcanic. He may not be able to generate red mana. Ultimately, I like this play from Boswell. It's the same one that I would make. I'm not 100% confidence right, but Spell Pierce is worth two mana. Stifle's worth one. And that, to me, is sort of how you, that's how you do, figure out the tiebreaker. Again, one thing as well with Bryant and his build of Storm, he does like Rite of Flame. If yep. you know him, and he does like Burning Wish, so he does like the red splash in the deck. Some people don't. Some people don't care for it, but he does. Yeah, the, the only way that the stifle in that spot is superior is if you really think that Bryant is color screwed and has to get Red Man and get a hand going. There's a Delta. And he had not played land yet this turn. So good on Boswell there for not stifling, because Bryant would have been able to get Red Mana if that was the bottom. Yep. So at this point, Bryant is going to sacrifice another Delta, go down to four. If the first one resolved, you have to imagine the second one will too, and it does. I also just like Boswell leading up the mana as long as possible here, because it's not clear whether or not Stifle or Spell Pierce is going to be better when Bryant tries to go off. Not clear which is going to be the superior card to have in your hand. But the minute you tap that mana, Bryant then can then go Duress or Cabal Therapy your away, your Force of Will, and now you have no protection. So the entire time you want Bryant to have to play around both Stifle and Spell Pierce for as long as you can make him do that. Well, Cook's got three mana in play. He's going to start with the Rite of Flame. Necessary mana to play around Spell Pierce. So now the Tarmogoyf Dial move down there, the Storm Counter, and the mana floating. Let's get out our visuals, have some little fun. Maybe it's dark ritual time. It is. Storm count three. He 
He's got three black floating. How about a burning wish? Is this the one you're supposed to counter? Spell Pierce is getting worse as we go. Storm count four. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, I think this is where Boswell's gonna stop the action here. He'll use a force of will. He'll remove the spell pierce. Gonna leave himself with just a stifle in hand. And that is gonna do it. So he's chosen correctly. Burning Witch gets countered. And we get ready for a second game. Andrew Boswell's gonna win game number one here over Brian Cook. Team Delver up a game over Storm. As we get ready to take a look at the sideboards, we'll start with Cook. He's got a little bit of wish action going on. Couple cards as well that are interesting. Three copies of Abrupt Decay, three copies of Xanthan Swarm, two copies of Chain of Vapor, a Void Snare, a Thought Seize, a Grape Shot, an Empty the Warrens, a Tendrils of Agony, a Massacre, and a Pass in Flames. I don't think Xanthan Swarm is that appealing in the matchup here because Boswell has access to Lightning Bolts. Now, a lot of Team Delver players do just immediately cut their Lightning Bolts, and then Xanthan Swarm can be uh, pretty reasonable again. There's no guarantee that that happens, though. You are playing against a deck with 12 counter spells, possibly boarding into more. So, uh, on the balance, the Xanthus boards probably come in, but they are a risky proposition. Oh, there's other things here for the boss. He's got two Graph Trigger's Cage, a Sulfur Elemental, an Ancient Grudge, a Hydra Blast, a Flusterstorm, a Pyroblast, a Red Elemental Blast, two Spell Snare, two Submerge, one Life from Loam, and two copies of Rough Tumble. Two copies of Graph Trigger's Cage does a lot of work in terms of cutting off the Pass and Flames kill, and every cheap counterspell, even if they're a little bit situational, is valuable for Boswell to have. Hydra Blast, Flusterstorm, Pyroblast, Yes, it's possible for these cards to be dead, but if Boswell establishes a clock and then can trade one for one with almost any spell that Brian casts, that's a very, very good game plan for Boswell. You saw him, you know, spell pierce a brainstorm just because trade one for one as much as possible, deny Brian as many resources as you can, and try to win with the one or two creatures you have in play. So I think all those red blasts and blue blasts, they're going to be really good for Boswell. Burning Wish, too, as you can, in, uh, excuse me, Spell Snare, too, as you can anticipate Burning Wish, Infernal Tutor, and possibly Cabal Ritual as well. Let's talk the Origins Game Fair, because we're going to talk about that Season 2 Invitational. Now, Origins is a big game fair, and so we're going to blow it out on our end. Two, five days of magic. Yeah, we are very excited about this June 3rd through 7th. This is all capped off with the Invitational, of course, but there's going to be a lot going on leading up to that event. Last Chance Invitational Qualifiers, a Super Game Night, the Invitational, of course, the Open Series, the IQs, and many more events, and over $80,000 in cash prizes to be given out. If you're not queued for the Invitational, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to do so. And even if you don't qualify, there's going to be a lot of Magic events. And of course, we're going to be at the Origins Game Fair. So a lot of tabletop games, a lot of board games as well, if you're into that kind of stuff. June 3rd through the 7th, Columbus, Ohio. And of course, whoever wins our Season 2 Invitational, well, they're going to get their likeness on a card. M much like Jacob Wilson did at our Season 1 Invitational, you can get this limited edition Invitational token a couple of different ways. You don't have to broker a deal like I did. Exactly. With Jacob earlier. They're, they're here in the three ways. Pretty sloppy on your end. For those of you at home, there are some much easier paths. You can sign up for any of our 20K Open Series events like we're having right now in Worcester. Any of the 5K Premier IQs, like the two we're going to be having tomorrow for Standard and Modern, or the ones that are run at your local store. And all store orders from StarCityGames.com and access to $5 will come with a Jacob Wilson token. Limited time only. We're about to have a new Invitational Champion. Most likely, new token coming down the pipeline. So if you want this Jacob Wilson Bunk token, either register for one of our large events or place an order from StarCityGames.com today. You call it sloppy on my end, but I'm the one with the token and you don't have one. I'm going to go up and politely ask Jacob for a token, and he'll hand me one, and then I'll keep my two tokens. And until then, you don't have one. So, like I said, sloppy, maybe, but do I have one? Yes. In terms of immediate gratification... I just attacked for one with the token. You definitely did. Two, it's a prowess trigger. Ah, okay, good point. At least one, probably two. Right. Just feels right. Just feels right. You know, you should broker a deal. Don't just ask. You have to trade. When's the last time you made a good magic trade? Hmm. Last time I made a good magic trade. Yeah, I can't say that I have. Right? So get in there. Go back to target owner, Patrick. Trade some cards. It's a good trade. It's a good trade. I'm, I, I don't regret anything that I've done with my trade. No, clearly not. You're very happy. I'm just saying in terms of trying to extract maximum value. I believe you could have done better with a little bit of patience, but that's not what life's all about. And if you're happy with the exchange you made, well then, there you go. Because when you think of me, you think of patience. Right. Delayed gratification, <laughs> patience, <laughs> Cedric Phillips calling cards. That's what it's all about. Just wait it out. But pick a better spot. There's only one spot Exactly. To pick. Right now. That's right. 
These players will shuffle up here for game number two. Cook will be on the play. Boswell on the draw. Boswell with a great draw in game one. Really tough one to beat. Yep. I mean, Brian still made a go of it. Yeah. And that last turn, if you're in Andrew's seat, you are nervous because there's no guarantee that even Stifle, Spell Pierce, Borswell is enough to win that game. But it was. And now Brian's got a lot of work out in front of him. Brian's hand looks very spell heavy. Doesn't look like there's a lot of lands over there. Not sure if he's going to send this one back or not. You see a ponder and ad nauseum, lion's eye diamond among the cards there. Looks like two copies of Burning Wish, too. See if he wants to keep this hand. He will keep this hand. Boswell, he's going to mulligan this hand. We'll take a look at a question here while he does mulligan. Wyatt Knox asked during our question session, do you feel that being a caster improves yourself as a competitor? I think that I'm much more attentive and better at reading body language than I used to. Because you watch a lot of people on camera, you get to see when this person's pausing and thinking, what are they thinking about? When this person's acting quickly, what is their hand like? So I think it helps in that respect. Uh, I don't, I, I think it's negative in terms of, I'm not as conscious of my own mannerisms, body language, general tightness of play. But in terms of identifying other people's reads, I feel like I'm way better now than I used to be. There is no substitute for playing the games. Yeah. It's, it's just helpful to be playing the games. Now, as far as the things you can learn from just watching a bunch of Magic, uh, like we do in the booth, you know, uh, I, I've certainly learned better ideas about a sideboard mm -hmm. and what people potentially have in their sideboards. Um, body language is something I've always picked up on pretty well when I was playing competitively. But I've, by watching, I've just been also been opened up to, like, lines of play of kind of when to do things and when not to do things. And I think that if you watch the coverage, you can also tell that there's a lot of spots for more bluffing in Magic. Yeah. People do not bluff enough on the balance. People play pretty straight up. Yep. That's what makes watching Tom Ross so much fun. Right, exactly. And that's where Tom gets such a huge edge. Yeah. William Jensen's another player I think of with a lot of bluff to his game. Yep. And there's a lot of percentage points to be picked up there that most Magic players, even very good ones, leave on the table. Bob's going to keep a six, it seems. Bloodstain Meyer here from Cook will start things off. He'll go down to 19. He's getting a dual land. We'll see which one it'll be in just a moment. We have a volcanic island. Let's see what the follow-up will be. It'll be a ponder, so a little manipulation to start here. Three cards. Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, and Cabal Therapy from the ponder. Cook not interested, gonna shuffle them away. Part of the problem with the bluffing, it's much like the 61 card thing. Don't try this at home. Sure. You know, there needs to be some degree of expertise. You can't just suddenly be, you know, attacking your frenzy goblin or your your foundry sheet denizens into fleece made lions unpumped and all that kind of stuff but there are more spots for judicious bluffing than i think most players engage in don't you tell me what i can't do yeah because i will do that and i may have during portland and my friend's goblin may have went in the graveyard right that's fine you got to make him block that's, that's true you got to put him to the test the Volcanic Island for Boswell and pass the turn back. Now, this is a different game for Boswell because this go around, he doesn't have the turn one Delver to get the pressure going. Or the turn can, one anything. His hand is juiced with blue cards here. He actually could have played Nibble Mongoose on the first turn, but it looks like he's just sitting on a very powerful reactive hand with Stifle. Just going to hang back a little bit. He could brainstorm on the turn if Brian doesn't do anything. Play the Nimble Mongoose on the second term and really get a clock going. He does have a daze and a force of will, too. Cook with no second land, so a wasteland here could be huge from Boswell. He did draw a land. It was a flooded strand, not a wasteland, fortunately for Cook. It's possible that Boswell's hand is so good right now that he's not interested in casting the Brainstorm. He wants to wait until he draws a little bit of dead weight. Yeah, he changed his mind. I actually kind of like the idea of not casting the Brainstorm because his hand is so good, but we'll see what he's able to pick up here. Well, there is a Wasteland. Makes you wonder if maybe he was supposed to Brainstorm before doing anything. Yeah, if he was going to do this, I think Boswell is best served just casting Brainstorm as the first order of business. Because maybe he finds something else he wants to do. Maybe he finds a Wasteland and just tags your opponent who just said go on turn two without playing a land. Two cards are going to go back. Boswell, very, very powerful hand. Just has no pressure in play at this point. He's going to sacrifice his Flooded Strand, make it a perfect Brainstorm. I imagine we'll have a Tropical Island coming, and maybe the Nimble Mongoose, though tapping out is a little risque. Yep. Although with Bryant saying go, having no land, maybe it's worth casting. 
Especially when you have a force of wills back up. I believe it days as well. Yep. It's possible Boswell's position is, my hand's so good that I'm not going to risk anything. And if Bryant draws a fetch line, maybe I'm just prefer to cycle that and so forth. But a lot of good paths for Boswell in this game. Kunkel draw. Picked up a copy of Brainstorm. Chromox. See if he's making a move here or not. Maybe this is just a really nice test spell. Yep. It's a powerful card. There's very little risk of this getting destroyed by an artifact removal spell. Yeah, Ancient Grudge or something like that. First of all, you're not going to find that many of those in the deck anyway. And there's no guarantee that Boswell even brought that card in. There's a spell pierce. The thing is that the Chrome Mox potentially gives Brian access to black mana, and then all sorts of bad things can happen. Yeah. Here's Brainstorm. Maybe we see the days for Boswell. Yeah, with Wasteland in hand, I think you just fight over the cantrips, assume Brian can't make a land drop this turn, knock out all of his mana, and beat him to death with the Nimble Mongoose. Well, that's, like, that's what he's going to try to do. Kind of quickly untap will Boswell and draw a card. Ponders what he's found. Found some time somewhere in there to take the hoodie off. Get him. Not sure how that happened. Get him. Possible's going to take his time before getting him with the Wasteland. Now he's going to play Wasteland. Going to decide if he wants to play the No Monkeys or Ponder this turn. He we're... might also just hold up Stifle. Yeah. He might just say, Bryant, you get no mana. I'll kill you in the Nimble Mongoose eventually. If you draw a fetch land, I'd rather have Stifle available. Exactly. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Fast turn back. Hook will draw. Cataxian Probe. Three draws available. But he wants to get a good look at the grip. Boswell will show it off. The Nimble Mongoose, the Stifle, the Force of Will, the Ponder, and the Volcanic Island. Solid grip here for the boss. Yep. Now the cards on the table. Brian knows that. Boswell could have been trying to attack him, but instead just wants to keep him off of one mana for as long as possible. Dark Ritual the draw. Nothing exciting about that. That said, Cook at 17 still has a lot of cards in hand. If he's able to run off a couple of lands here and Boswell doesn't draw all that great, he can still win this game. Yep, it's not, it's not a done deal. There's Volcanic Island. Cook will cross that off the list of cards he knows about. Delver Secrets with a draw from Boswell. There's the goose. Doesn't appear Boswell wants to tap out and put the Delver in play or cast the Ponder. I suppose he could. Boswell's clock is a little on the slow side right now. I actually like taking this turn to just tap out for threats. All right. Then you get potentially a three turn clock into play if your Delver flips. You get the threshold with your Nimble Mongoose. And Brian has no lands in play and has to beat you in three turns against Forceful. Asking quite a bit. Well, there's a Delver. Shields are down. There's a Swamp. Can't even Wasteland that. So that's a big draw. Can't stifle that either. This will be a Cabal Therapy. That's a way to poke a hole. Yep. And Boswell, I think, just has to let this go. All of his cards are so valuable, so no point in Force of Willing this. It feels like this will be Force of Will. Or this will name Force of Will. Right, but then Boswell gets to untap because he cast Ponder. Now he has Threshold, potentially a three-turn clock if the Delver flips. And Brian still has to beat the Stifle in your hand, too. Yeah. Wow, he is going to force this. Moving Ponder to protect the Stifle. Surprised? A little bit. Uh, to me, the Force of Will and Stifle feel pretty close in value. Reveal Brainstorm, flip that Delver. Six cards in the bin, can get it up to seven. Looks like he's going to right now. Here's a Brainstorm. Three cards coming. Stifle was one. That's the other small critique I have of Boswell's play last turn, is that if Bryant 
Bryant, you assume, takes either Force of Will or Stifle. Not sure which one, but he's taking one of the two. That puts card number six in the graveyard and then ponders card number seven. As it was, Boswell had to draw. Now he's drawing pretty likely to be able to get seven cards in his graveyard that turn, mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee of it, and his clock might be really slow. Yeah, what if he drew a land that turn? If he example? draws Volcanic Island or Tropical Island, yep. now he's hitting for two instead of, you know, say, six. six or four. Yep. Still That's a great spot, Brian. One land in play. Now two, Let's though. Let's make it two. Two his, turn clock. His deck is cooperating as far as the draws are concerned to get him back into this game. But as you mentioned, it's a two turn clock. He's underneath some real pressure here. All I can do is pass the turn back. Boswell going to draw. In for six. Cook down to five. Cook will draw. Picked up a copy of Cabal Therapy. He will concede the game. His hand is not going to work out the way that he needs it to. Stuck with the wrong mana. Boswell with a couple of blue cards in hand, and that's going to do it. The boss is on his 6-0. Oh. He takes care of Bryant Cook. Two games to zero. Team Redelver will take care of Storm. Pretty good matchup there for Boswell. Was able to navigate things appropriately and get the job done. Yeah, got to win the die roll. Got two very solid draws, and uh, Bryant just couldn't quite get out from under the, those starts. A clock backed up by those counter spells.